Workout one for the gymnast throwdown is a 14 minute AMRAP. You will begin with six alternating reverse lunges with a dumbbell in a front rack on your right arm, followed by eight lateral burpees over the dumbbell, followed by six reverse lunges with the dumbbell in your left front rack, followed by 12 alternating dumbbell power cleans. Team, welcome to week one of the Gymless Throwdown brought to you by The Process Programming. My name is Ed Haynes and joining me in the studio today is Ant Haynes. Ant, welcome. Thank you very much. Good to be here. We are here to talk about workout one, which was a 14 minute AMRAP consisting of some lunges, some burpees over the dumbbell, some more lunges and some dumbbell power cleans in this workout. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit scared about what's gonna happen next 40 minutes and probably tears me to shreds. But myself <laughs> and Liam go head to head as we take on workout one of the gymnast throwdown. Before we get into it, Ant, anything from you on the gymnast throwdown? Uh, what are your thoughts of this competition, first of its kind? Uh, I think it's really cool that we've, uh, you know, we, we're able to, I mean, it's great to be back here doing these, uh, doing a commentary on the workouts, but it's awesome because obviously we've been in lockdown in Hong Kong. <clears throat> A lot of the world has also been going back into like second, third, fourth lockdowns as well. Um, a lot of people have handled it really well and like accumulated loads of equipment and they're set up for success. But also a lot of people have now been stranded and they're kind of like, you know, they're, they're kind of falling off the wagon when it comes to fitness. So it's, 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 it's nice to be able to push people back into a community um, competition, but also for those people who are gearing up to the CrossFit Open, you know, maybe they've been lacking some sort of intensity or some sort of competitive atmosphere and environment. So hopefully this is going to provide those people um, with a bit of a competitive um, outlook and, you know, environment to be able to have a bit of fun for three weeks. Nice. Yeah, I think so. The, the goal of the throwdown was, well, firstly, there's been nothing going on for a really long time, not just in Hong Kong. You know, we've had 11 weeks of lockdown uh, or gym closure, I should say. But I know the rest of the world is also going through something very similar. And the idea was, to, you know, get the community together. And the community this time isn't just a CrossFit community. We have said that all you need is a dumbbell and a skipping rope. And I think that's pretty accessible. We have two divisions, the live and then the perform compete division. Each of those has some different scalings with regards to loads. Uh, from a skipping standpoint, we may see double unders in the perform compete categories. Probably going to see single unders in the lift category. So super accessible. Maybe. We want the entire world getting behind uh, this little fun three week competition. And if you're in Hong Kong, and you want to take part and you don't have the equipment, we are going to be giving you the opportunity to do the workout just outside Coastal Fitness. We're going to create a station for you and you can come in, come down and do the workout. All right, without further ado, let's get into workout one. So myself and Liam uh, go head to head. Liam is one of our, is our newest coach here at Coastal Fitness in the process programming. Uh, he has been my training partner for the last couple of weeks, had no idea he was going to be doing this three down workout, but like he does, a real trooper, just said, all right, let's 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 just do it. Told him the workout and five minutes later, we were doing the workout. Uh, all right, Ant, lead the way. Take it away. Liam's probably going to need a deload after this as well. Yeah, same. I'm already, <laughs> already day one into deload. Oh, look at that new space, firstly. It looks good. It does We look have nice. been busy expanding the premises of Coastal Fitness, and this is in our new space. So, Ant, talk us through the workout. Okay, so the dumbbell lunges is the first movement. You'll notice, obviously, it's a front rack lunge position. So, in terms of movement standards, make sure you check what is um, acceptable for the front rack position. It's six reps. So, dumbbell stays in the front rack, and you alternate legs each time. Um, in terms of the first round, you've got to start with the right side. So, that's just something that a bit of admin is got to make sure you guys nail it then moves on to eight lateral burpees over the dumbbell now i know i've been guilty of this as well in you know workouts previous skipping around the dumbbell mm. it's really important that you get those feet and go over the dumbbell you're both doing a really good job in round one of making sure as you both step up the step up foot is literally right next to the dumbbell or in line with the handle of the dumbbell which is basically going to make you go straight over once you're on eight burpees over the dumbbell you go back to the other arm which should be the left arm. And then you go through six alternating reverse lunges, just like you guys are doing. Obviously, you guys are starting at a very conservative pace. I know you did a workout before this as well. As soon as you, <laughs> a little mess up there. Um, so as soon as you've done the second set of 
uh, reverse lunges, the athletes and went into 12 alternating dumbbell power cleans. And that's something I know it's something I spoke to you guys about before. Dumbbell power clean, it's smart to start on your left hand so you can go straight into the right arm lunge in the second round if you're wanting to go unbroken, if you want to kind of tie those two in, which you do here. It doesn't matter which knee steps back as long as it's in the right arm. And the legs are alternating. And the legs are alternating. Yeah, so something that, uh, as you saw uh, in that first round there, there are quite a lot of moving parts to this workout. Seems simple, there's only three movements, a lunge, a burpee, and a power clean. But what threw me off uh, was, you know, that the first set of lunges has to be the right hand, second set of lunges has to be the left hand, legs are always alternating, dumbbells are always alternating. And it took me, to be honest, a couple of rounds to kind of get into the flow of the workout. Uh, where it became brainless as to what was happening next. So yeah. you kind of saw there kind of a bit of a shuffle up with my hands, kind of forgot what I was doing. Uh, now, what I would say if I was to do this as a competition, I would definitely put a bit more thought and time into my prep. Yeah, uh, I didn't really kind of, I went through one quick warm up round just to kind of see how long a round would take, get an idea of how it was going to feel. And that basically gave me a rough estimate as to how many rounds I was going to compete in the workout. But what I didn't really play with was like, you know, the nuances of which hand do you start with, which hand should you finish with. Um, and you know, so I think now by round two, um, I've kind of got back into flow of it now. I do still do a stuff up somewhere. I can't remember. I think it's coming <laughs> up soon. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, from a warm up perspective, really important. You actually take yourself through a round. My strategy in this workout was that I wanted to go on broken in all the dumbbell movements. So that meant going from, uh, the burpee into lunges, into power cleans, back into lunges without putting the dumbbell down. Having done that in the warm up, I knew it was definitely possible and didn't jack my heart rate out too much. Um, and I knew therefore what I was gonna use to modulate my pace was gonna always be my burpees. Yeah. So if my heart rate got too high or my breathing rate got too high, I was just simply ready to go to a step back burpee and a step up burpee. Yeah. Uh, similarly, if I found like it was too slow, then I was ready to, I had another gear in my burpee to be able to move a little bit faster if needed. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can see, obviously, you guys aren't moving already. You know, you're already slightly ahead of Liam here. But check out the burpee and how you guys step up. Notice that you're stepping up with the outside foot, whereas Liam's always stepping up with the inside foot. Um, personal preference to me is always the outside foot because it allows the inside leg to travel not, not quite as far up as the outside leg. And that doesn't mean you have to... Remember, the jump doesn't have to be lateral. It's the, the burpee that needs to be lateral. So... When you do the jump, you're kind of at like a very slight angle, which just makes it ever so slightly more efficient. Yeah. Whereas you notice Liam has to bring that right knee up in that last burpee really high up to the chest, more compression. He's having to work harder through the hip flexor to bring it up there. So, you know, over 14 minutes when you're going through a ton of burpees, that could make up the difference of just one or two seconds, which is three or four reps possibly. Yeah, for sure. I also think the outside leg helps with lateral movement. Yeah. Uh, when, we, when we're traveling laterally in the jump, it's actually the outside outside leg that's generating the majority of the power to push you sideways, and so by stepping up with the outside leg, like you said, less work has to be done on that inside leg. So you're just really focusing on one leg, doing the most amount of work. Yeah. Um, something that you mentioned at the start, which was something that happens often when doing uh, burpees over a dumbbell, is that we tend to move around the dumbbell sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, typically the feet travel behind the dumbbell. So what I made sure I was doing to ensure that didn't happen, I didn't have any costly no reps was always when I bring my foot to the outside, which you'll see here in a second, always making sure that outside foot was in line with the dumbbell. Yeah. I knew if I could bring the outside foot in line with the dumbbell, I was probably gonna jump over the dumbbell. Now, if I wasn't thinking about that, I could have a lazy foot that steps up behind the dumbbell, or I should say in front of the dumbbell, which would probably mean that my jump would then not go over the dumbbell. Yeah, for sure. So I think, so there we go, there's my second screw up. <laughs> kind of thought I was going into power cleans there. So I think, you know, just personally in terms of how this workout felt for me, was I think for a lot of people, it's a, it's very, it can, it's a very sustainable workout. Yeah. There aren't any like heavy loads. There's no extreme complexity. Uh, most of the movements in terms of selection of movements can be quite just slow grindy movements. Yeah. A lunge, a dumbbell power clean, big range of motion. Burpee is probably the only, the only movement in this workout for most people that has a real potential of jacking up heart rate and breathing rate a lot. Yeah. And so I deliberately you know, chose a methodical pace. My goal here was, okay, I'm not here to try to set any world records. I'm not gonna try and move too fast to the workout, but I just wanna keep on moving. So mm. I know that in my head, I'm, I'm pretty confident that there won't be more than a couple of seconds of difference between my fastest round and my slowest round. Yeah. Did you feel going through the workout, obviously 
you got hindsight as well so you still got eight minutes left in this time but was there any sort of local fatigue that you did feel like did your back jack up at all did your uh triceps your pecs get tired i know those uh little boys on your chest yeah. so maybe they got a little bit tired hey, babies a lot for uh for little chicken fillets like mine yeah um no i would say that i didn't have any local muscle endurance what we mean by that is you know a specific group of muscles or a muscle often when we have to do lots of repetitions of one thing um, we'll start to kind of get fatigued and that becomes our limiter. We start to feel like a burning sensation yeah. or just you know, weakness and fatigue where it just can't do another rep. I think that the rep scheme is short enough in each of the lunges that it's not enough to really kind of blow out the glutes and the legs. Yeah. I think the burpees, again, low enough rep scheme, not enough to really kind of jack you up too much. And then the power clean, you know, relative to what most of us can power clean, it's a light load, yeah. right? If that was a dumbbell snatch, and I think a little bit different because the range of motion would have been even greater. But the power clean, we can really use you know, the back and the bicep and the lat to help with that movement and there's less kind of isolation in the overhead position. Yeah, the, gl the glorified bicep curl. Exactly. I mean, did, did you ever even think about moving to a power clean or did you just stay muscle the whole time? No, I, um, I stayed muscle. And to be honest, like the front rack position with a dumbbell, some people just had a little trip up there. Some people... Um, find it to be a very comfortable position yeah we know we talk about in the movement standards one of the other positions people can go to is with the dumbbell kind of on the back yeah. but i think you know probably from a mobility restriction uh standpoint that's just not a comfortable position for me and so you'll notice that my finishing position is actually kind of out to the outside a little bit yeah which means that there's less dumbbell actually supported on my shoulder i think liam actually has more of that back head of the dumbbell resting on his body which yeah. means there's less work going through his arm. So from an efficiency standpoint, I'd probably say actually Liam's probably being a bit more efficient with that front rack position. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, just because I knew the rep scheme wasn't massive, that it was not going to be too much of an issue. Yeah, I mean, you can, also, you can also put the dumbbell on your shoulder as long as the hand stays around it. But again, for a lot of people to actually get in that position, you're probably going to be expending a little more energy having to work a little bit harder just to try and get the hand and keep it around the dumbbell. Yeah. When actually six reps probably isn't really, you're not warranting enough. It's not like a 50 foot walking lunge where you probably got up to 16 steps where you're having to walk back and forth. So yeah, I think, you know, just by looking at your pace, obviously Liam's dropped off a little bit. He's getting quite a few regular step backs and step back in, um, which is obviously slowing him down compared to you. And I mean, you're not setting a, like a blazing pace where you're starting to fall off, but it's been very, very steady and very methodical, like you said, to start. And it seems to stay the same. Did you look at your round splits? I haven't. I haven't had a chance to look at my round splits, but I'm really confident. Just in base, you know, I was conscious of, and I always am pretty conscious with these longer workouts where you're doing accumulating quite a lot of rounds. I am conscious of the time taken, particularly in transitions. I think with the movements, I don't think my 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 speed or my tempo or my cadence of any rep or any movement speeds up or slows down. Pretty much the same the whole time. I'm always doing a jump back, step up, burpee. Uh, you know, I'm always kind of like slowly moving through each lunge. So I think the only time I could potentially be adding time to each round was if I started to rest more between movements. And I kind of don't ever take more than just kind of a breath between and just pick it up again. Now, if I was to do that work again, workout again, or, you know, I was doing this workout as a part of the gymnast throw down and I was trying to push it mm. and, you know, achieve the best score possible in hindsight. And like you said, hindsight is a beautiful thing. I definitely did have another gear that I could have kicked up into. Yeah. And uh, so I think really kind of, you know, I glance over at clock around about now, I think, just to kind of see how long's left. And I typically, you know, once I have a strategy in mind after a warm up, I'm not ever really looking at the clock after that. Yeah. It's just focusing on my strategy and then kind of just knowing that, well, if I can hit the strategy, it's going to, I'll probably end up in a good place. Yeah. But I did want to see, because at this point in time, I think kind of every, let's say every three minutes in this workout, the RPE is kind of just going up a notch, yeah. even though my pace is staying exactly the same. So, you know, the first three minutes felt like, honestly, a six out of 10. Then yeah. the next three minutes felt like a seven. And then the next three minutes taking me to 12 minutes is then like an eight. And then probably kind of like the last three, two, three minutes, I don't even know where we're at mass wise, yeah. is, was the only Finish time where I got yeah. to kind of like eight and a half, nine. And I think with a workout like this, where the cycle speed between rounds is fast, that's actually an approach you want to take. Yeah. You know, vice versa, what a lot of people do is start way too hot. Yeah. So around the first three minutes actually feels like a nine out of 10. And we know that we can't sustain a nine out of 10 for nine more minutes. Oh, sorry. Well, the feeling of a nine out of 10, the, the, the feeling of a nine out of 10, probably 10 out of 10 stays, but then the actual effort level goes down. Exactly. We, can, we yeah. can't maintain a nine out of 10 work rate yeah. for 12 more minutes is what I can, oh, 11 more minutes is what yeah. we're saying. So if you're in that position, you, you know, you're two rounds in, 
or three rounds in or three minutes into the workout and you're already feeling like your heart rate, breathing rate's out of control, we know what's going to happen. Yeah. Your output is going to start to drop off. You're going to start moving slower. And the RPE goes up still. RPE well. continues. You probably max out RPE five, six minutes. When we say RPE, we're talking about rate of perceived exertion here, guys. You know, out of 10, how hard are you pushing? Well, uh, yeah. You think you're pushing. You think you're pushing. Yeah. The perceived effort. Um, yeah, you're going to get to a point where you just can't push any harder. And like, that's what we call fatigue-based training. Yeah. So if we were talking about a training scenario. Holding on for if, dear life. Yeah, if we're doing that every time we do aerobic work and we're pushing to and beyond our threshold, then we're not actually getting any quality training in. Yeah. It's just fatigue-based training where we're just getting sloppy. We're not developing the aerobic system anymore. Probably movement quality is going down, you know, creating a lot of uh, waste products and lactate and, and, you know, a lot of those things which don't really contribute to long-term health and take a long time to recover from. But from a competition setting, which is basically what we're doing now, you know, prepping yeah. for a comp, yeah, it is necessary to push the threshold, but there's a time to do it. Yeah. And you've got to know when to do it. So, you know, I've got two minutes on the clock here. Like you've moved a little bit faster. Yeah, I've, st I've stuck with a step up technique, but I've just taken it up a little bit faster because I knew that I just had enough in the tank to push. And I also knew that I'd be getting another round here. Yeah. So I knew that I think I still have another round of burpees. I was conscious of that with the time. And so I knew that for my last round of burpees, okay, that's going to be the time where I'll push it. Yeah. Now, in a competition setting, you know, if this had more meaning for me, uh, then I probably would have put the foot down an, a minute earlier. Yeah. I knew I had enough. I'm, I kind of, I'm aware of my engine enough to know that I did have another gear to give and I could have given it. But yeah. I think in the context of kind of demoing this workout, had done another session as well. Um, I wasn't willing to just sell my soul yeah. on this day. And I wanted to push uh, and, you know, give it a good effort, but I didn't want to completely empty the tank. Yeah. I think that, I mean, a few like uh, small things I've just noticed, especially with Liam going over the dumbbell now. Um, number one in the burpee, stay low. Uh, there's no need to jump up. See how Liam's almost fully extending at the top of that burpee. That's actually a lot of extra work that he's yeah. doing there. The lower you can stay, you can see how you stay low. Your chest is almost parallel to the floor when you're doing this. You've also gone to a jump back, jump up as yeah. well. Uh, which you should be able to do, like you said, should be a kick into our next gear. Yeah. Um, one thing I do notice that a lot of people do, and Liam's actually demonstrated just before when Kiara zoomed in just between his legs, when he went into the dumbbell power clean, he picked it up and then tapped it back down with the mm. single head, then went overhead, then went yeah. to the front rack, sorry. So he just did it there again. So, you, you know, a lot of people do that and there's no real reason to do it. Yeah. You're essentially contract, contracting on the concentric and then going back down and then going back overhead again. And, I, and I think need. most importantly, you know, in a workout like this where people might be getting six, seven, eight rounds, that's a second gone. Yeah, now, you sure. add that up over the rounds, you know, that's eight to ten seconds lost of you not doing anything. For sure. You're still working hard to pick up, pick up the dumbbell, but you're not actually getting a repetition. Yeah. And so I think those things really do matter. The hurt locker. I think, yeah, limbs and hurt locker. Now, <laughs> I was definitely breathing. Um, I definitely probably felt like that was like an eight and a half, nine effort. So it definitely wasn't easy. Um, this is me just trying to be disciplined and not... Okay, then I crumbled. <laughs> I tried to stay up for as long as possible. Well, I mean, it was very much aerobic, the fact that you're both still on your feet and you're kind of like walking about. Yeah. You know, you're not collapsing on the floor, yeah. dying. And I, and I think for the most most people who are doing this workout, that's exactly what you want to feel. Yeah. You know, the only time you want to go beyond that point is probably that last couple of minutes when you're like, okay, now it's time to, to really push it. But if you're feeling anything more than an aerobic workout uh, before the... 12 13 minute mark then you know yeah, you're in trouble, trouble. Yeah. so i think you know takeaways here for people doing this workout i think the warm-up is a really important time uh, and a really important period for you to really you know create your strategy here um what i would definitely do is go through a round of the workout play around the techniques which hand to start the power cleaning you know when you're gonna be where you're gonna be placing the dumbbell down where you're gonna take your feet up and try to you know try to forecast okay if that was one round and that took me two minutes I have to complete 14 minutes of this. Is this a pace that I can sustain for the next you yeah. know, remainder of the time? And then, you know, like we said, once you have that strategy, your focus when the workout starts is now just executing that strategy. Yeah. Glance over the clock if you need to, only to know when you, when you have to push. Yeah, for sure. Cool. And thank you so much for not completely tearing me to shreds. I really appreciate it. Uh, we will be back next week to talk about workout two. In the meantime, good luck to everyone taking on workout one, the gymless three down. It is not too late to sign up. You have up until Monday to register for the workout and we look forward to seeing you on the leaderboard.